this morning, what's going on with the weather? A tornado hits New York City for the first time in decades. Floods pour into the Midwest. And it's so hot in the South, they're opening cooling shelters. Sam Champion leads us through the heat, the wind, and the water. Hope at the mine? Rescuers have now drilled within 200 feet of the trapped miners, expected to reach the location this afternoon. And rescuers say there are some air pocket sections that did not collapse. And we're so glad to have you with us this morning. Good morning, America. I'm Diane Sawyer. As you know, Robin is at home this week. We hope she'll be back soon. Absolutely. And I'm Chris Cuomo. It's Thursday, August 9th, 2007. And here it is, the picture of that tornado that struck New York City Wednesday morning. There it is. Right. They're calling it a tornado category two, which means that the winds got as high as 135 miles per hour. Absolutely. And right now, take a look live at some of the damage in Brooklyn, New York. People woke and now the doctor is on call for Good Morning America. We all get headaches from time to time, but 40 million Americans suffer from chronic headaches, some of them getting severe headaches more than 15 days out of every month. But there's a new treatment that could provide some much needed relief. Could it be the cure everyone's been waiting for? ABC News medical editor Dr. Tim Johnson is here with the story, Tim. Well, Diane, obviously there are many different types of headaches, tension headaches, migraines, rebound headaches that are caused by taking too much medication for headaches. This new procedure we're going to talk about combats a specific type of so-called chronic daily headache, which is caused by nerve compression. at me for so many years growing up with the boys it, it was a lot to miss for years Lori Shinald's world was one of darkness and pain all because of a headache that just wouldn't go away eight out of ten days it would be a pressure and a pain um, at the back desperate to regain control of her life she tried everything from pain medications to acupuncture but nothing worked it got to be where really I had learned to live with it and I would just go crawl in a hole, just kind of retreat. Lori isn't alone. Sometimes it's like a pounding when it gets really bad, but it's mostly like a pressure. Like my head is just gonna expand and, you know, explode or something. 16-year-old Jevin Luxinger also has an ongoing headache, so painful he was homebound for his entire junior year of high school. Both Lori and Jevin suffer from chronic headaches, that is, headaches that occur at least 15 days out of the month. The standard treatment is medication, and if that doesn't work, patients must learn to live with the pain. Now, there may be a new alternative. When a patient says to me, you're my last resort, this is the last thing that's left for me to try, and it, it's, it's really very compelling. Dr. Pamela Blake uses a minimally invasive surgery for patients with chronic daily headache caused by an irritation of one or more of the nerves that radiate from the back of the skull. So it's kind of like a pinched nerve you might have in your neck or in your back and the pain radiates down your arm or down your leg. In this case, the nerve gets pinched, we think, in the musculature of the neck and the pain radiates along the distribution of the nerve, which is up into the head or down into the neck. Dr. Blake very carefully chooses patients who might respond and then pairs up with a plastic surgeon, Dr. Carlton Perry, who performs the surgery. It's called nerve decompression. Hello. She has supervised over 100 operations and says so far results are good. About 64% of patients had a greater than 50% reduction in their headaches after the surgery. The operation is controversial. Other specialists say the surgery is in very early stages and still needs to go through clinical trials before they would recommend it. But Dr. Blake says for many patients, even a small reduction in pain can be the difference between being incapacitated and having a productive life. To see all my friends get jobs and start to drive, and just to know that I might never be able to do that, but before I found this. Today, Jevin Luxinger is having his surgery, hoping to get rid of his headache, which has been with him for almost a year. His mother, Carolyn, has been suffering along with him. It's like I've been sitting back, watching my son slowly die, and not, not being able to do anything, and moms are supposed to fix things. 
In the operating room, Dr. Perry can see that the nerve running through the muscle in the back of Jevin's neck is compressed. These kind of findings of scarring in here are consistent with the people that get relief from this surgery. Lori Schinnell says her surgery eight weeks ago was a success. While she still gets occasional headaches, they are less severe and less frequent than before. I can't remember feeling like this. I mean, I mean, it was like so long ago, and I said, I feel like doing 10,000 things. I mean, I just can do it. I feel like I can do it all. Mm. Goodness. Mm. Who, who, what is that? You can see a compressed nerve. You can the see The surgeon it. can see when they go in and uh, make a pretty good prediction about whether they can bring And relief. do we know how Jevin is? Yes, he's seven weeks after his operation. His mother says he's doing remarkably well. He's uh, exercising again. He's going back to school. She sees a huge change. Sometimes it'll take two or three months to know what the final result will be. We look at it, hear about it, and think it could be dangerous, is it? Not really. This is a very simple surgical procedure. There's, you don't cut any nerves. You don't go into any brain tissue. You're basically just removing some muscle and or connective tissue to relieve the pressure on the nerve. So from a surgical viewpoint, it's very, very simple. There's a slight risk, as always, from general anesthesia. But one of the reasons I'm cautiously excited about this procedure is precisely because it doesn't cause any real damage to tissue. So looking so far, they've done about 100 people. Yes, she's followed over. It's promising. I do, because she's followed over 100 people for at least a year now and getting the kind of results she mentioned uh, over two thirds with at least 50% improvement. Some patients over 90% improvement. It's not for everybody, it doesn't work for everybody. But given that these patients are so desperate and have tried everything imaginable, I think this is worth considering in selected patients. So if you think it's sitting at home that it could be you and you're suffering from this, how do you know <laughs> if you're one of the candidates? Well, you have to go to a good neurologist who's willing to consider this possibility, do the testing to make sure it's these kind of nerves. The problem is going to be finding surgeons who are doing this. Right now, there's only a few in the country. But I think after she publishes her data, a lot more are going to get interested in it. And what about medications we heard mentioned? Any other general treatments that might address this? Well, general treatments, of course, besides medications, people are trying acupuncture a lot. There is another specific treatment for this so-called occipital nerve compression, namely an electrical device that sends signals to this nerve area. It's tried, sometimes helpful, but not generally so. So there's a place for this, for this new kind of treatment. Well, again, as she said, if you give somebody back a few days every month, a week every month, it can make a big difference in for their sure, lives. For sure. Thank you, Tim Johnson. And coming up, as we said in our next half hour, the preacher and the president's how Billy Graham came to counsel the most powerful men in the world.